Hi everybody, Brendan from c21teaching.com.au here and in today's uh, flipped professional learning video I'm going to show you how to use one of the newest features in the Google Apps for Education uh, suite, the quiz function in the uh, Google Form app. So what I've got on the screen is a brand new blank Google Form, I've done nothing with it just yet and I'm going to show you how we can go through, create that as a quiz that you can use in any variety of contexts with a range of ages, how to set it up how to create it so that it auto marks, how to set it up so that it sends the responses to the students that they've put in. So to start off with, obviously we need to give the form a name. I'm just gonna call it test form for the purposes of this. I'm not gonna really do anything with the questions because this is merely a demonstration. You can go through and you know, well you would know by now how to set up the questions. I'm gonna number the questions and I'm just gonna add in three options just so we can differentiate exactly what we're doing when we're looking at the answers. But I'm not really gonna do anything else with them at this point because to be frank, I don't need to. Uh, if you've watched any of my previous videos, uh, you will know how to set up a Google Form. And if you haven't, please go back through the playlist and find the relevant video. So I've got a three question quiz set up now. Each question has three options. I have made all of those, op um, all of those questions as required questions. So what I'll do next is I'll come up to the gear wheel in the top right hand corner which is of course my settings. Now up here I've got a couple of tabs. I can restrict this to my domain so if you're on a at education account uh, you can restrict it to others who are on an at education account. Collect the email address that will create a column in Google Sheet so you know exactly who it is that's put the answer through. I would typically do that and also limit it to one response, unless you've got a particular reason for not doing so, of course. Uh, response receipts, what this does is it emails a copy of a student's answers to them. So these answers that they selected, it sends them to them. It does not show them in that email the correct answers. They would need to have a look at that uh, at the end of the quiz. Again, up to you whether you want to do that. And then at the end of it, of course, can they can respondents submit, uh, sorry, edit after they submit it? And do you want to see a summary chart and text responses? That last one, I will always go yes because it gives you a graphic representation within Google Forms of the answers that students are putting through. The next one across is presentation. Um, very simple for this one, up to you whether you want to use those or not. The last one, this is where we want to be. This is the quizzes tab, it's only fairly recent. We need to turn that on, of course. Now there's a few options. So release the grade. Do we show the student the correct answers and their mark immediately after they've hit submit? Or do we do it uh, later on after a manual review? Which means that students will need to submit their email address. They'll need to have an email address submitted to show they, who they are. It's up to you which way you go. Respondents can see missed questions, correct answers, or point values. Again, tick those if you want students to see those things. Untick them if you don't want students to see those things. We go ahead, we do that, we click save. Now you can see that there's a new option here in the question which says answer key. If I click on that, it brings up the question in a slightly different format. Uh, over here in the top right hand corner for that question is a points option. So I can give that question however many number of points I want to. So if you want all of the questions to be worth one mark, then you just go through and select one for each of them. But if you want to weight particular questions for whatever reason, you can do that. So I'm just going to go through and make all of these questions worth one mark each. Click on question two, select answer key, make it one point. Question three, answer key. Don't forget to select the correct answer, of course, which I did just forget to do. Uh, let's make that one there and that one there. So now we've told Google Forms which option is the correct answer and how many points each question is worth. You can only do the quizzing format with multiple choice, with checkbox or with drop down. So now we've got a three question quiz. We've told Google Forms what we want the correct answers to be and how much we want them to be worth. We want to check and see what it's going to look like for our students. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I've just clicked on the I, the preview symbol up here in the top right hand corner. It brings up the test form. So this is what the students will see. So because we set it to collect the email addresses, it says that right up the front, your username, email address, will be recorded when you submit this form, which means that the students have the option to sign out and sign back in if they're sharing devices uh, or sharing computers. So let's just go ahead, option one, option one, option three. 
send me a copy of my responses so the students have the option whether or not they want to get that copy and submit. So now that's done, it then brings up this part here. So I've got an option to view my score or to see previous responses. So let's go view my score first. It brings up the form and it highlights how I've gone. It, uh, very, very simple. Total points, one out of three at the top there, and it shows you what the questions were worth. Now, if we click on the other option, see previous responses, you can see how people have been going with it. Obviously, that those graphs will change over time as more students submit answers, but that could be quite useful as well. Now, in terms of how we can see that within Google Forms itself, if we click on the responses tab, we can see a summary of the answers, or we can see an ind the individual's answers, and we can click through different students there. But have a look at the summary option. It can be quite useful. It will give you a very quick graphical representation if you know which question is about which um, of where any gaps may be in students learning uh, on a particular topic. This could be particularly useful if you are trying to use it as an exit ticket, a, a quick capture, a snapshot of what students have learned or what they've taken in during a particular lesson. Uh, but again, this could be used in any range of contexts with a variety of age groups um, from infants all the way through to tertiary education. Uh, that's all I've got time for in this particular episode. For more videos, check out c21teaching.com.au. Until next time, thanks very much.